In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to make concept maps using three different concept mapping tools. The first one we'll look at is IHMC's CMAP tools. The second one is called Visual Understanding Environment, or VUE, v -U -E, for short. And the third one is called MindMeister. Let's get started with CMAP tools, and to do that you will need to download and install that tool on your computer. So go to their website, go down to the link that says Downloaded, click it, and then click the download link. CMAP tools is free, and it was developed by IHMC, or the Institute for Human and Machine Cognition. After you install CMAP tools, it should look like this. You'll have a blank workspace in front of you, and to begin building your concept map, simply double-click anywhere on the screen. That creates a node, and you can replace the question marks that appear there with text. So I am going to create a concept map about the parts of speech in the English language. So, parts of speech. Now, that's a little small, at least for you to see on this screencast. And so I'm going over to the Styles palette. I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. And I am going to increase the size to, let's say, 24. And that's made it bigger. Adding subnodes, or another layer level of nodes, is easy. Again, simply click on the space, the white space, another node appears. So one part of speech is nouns, another one is verbs, another one is conjunctions, another one is prepositions, and another one is adjectives, and there is one more, but I'm going to hold off just for a minute, because first I'm going to show you how you can join these. You simply click on the node where you want the connection to start, grab onto this little arrow, and pull it down to the other nodes, like that. there. The other way that you can make a connection is by highlighting, simply grabbing onto the arrow, pulling it, and it will create a node automatically with the link, with the connecting line already there. So what have I forgotten? Adverbs. Now you'll see that the connecting lines also have labels on them where you can add a descriptive term. So I will change this to something like such as. So parts of speech such as nouns. And I will do the same thing with the others. Pasting just to save time rather than typing. And these labels might also be a bit small so let's increase the size of those. We go up to Window, again open up the Style Palette, click Font, and increase the size to, let's say, 24. Now changing the font size of the labels has squished things a little bit, but we can easily adjust, move things around, and in fact, if you want to move multiple parts of the concept map at the same time. It's easy. Just highlight the ones that you want to move and then drag them where you want them to go. Now let's build our concept map a little bit more. So under nouns there are subcategories such as pronouns and call them common nouns, and also proper nouns. A 
again, let's change this to such as. And let's build this a bit more, and I'll show you why in a minute. So conjunctions, we have coordinate conjunctions, and we also have subordinate conjunctions. And under adverbs, we have adverbs of time, adverbs of manner, but I'm going to put conjunctive adverbs. They are also a kind of adverb. Now, the reason I did this is because one of the things that you can do with a concept map, and it's also one of the things that makes concept maps such a powerful tool, is that you can show cross-links or horizontal links between terms that might not otherwise seem to be connected. So, for example, under conjunctions, and specifically under coordinate conjunctions, I would add the word but, which is a coordinate conjunction. Let me just fill out these labels while I'm here. And under conjunctive adverbs, we have examples such as however. So that means that if we follow the branches of the tree down, we have parts of speech. One part of speech is conjunctions, and one kind of conjunction are coordinate conjunctions, and an example of a coordinate conjunction is the word but. We also have another branch here, parts of speech, such as adverbs, specifically conjunctive adverbs, and an example is the word however. So those two belong to different branches of the tree because they are different parts of speech. However, the word but and the word however do have a connection. And their connection can be indicated by simply dragging a horizontal connector line there. And for the label, we will add something like um, semantically similar, because the words but and the word however, even though they are distinct parts of speech, they are semantically similar in that they both convey a sense of adverse relationship between something that has been said and something new which is about to be said. So that is basically 90% of what you need to know in order to use this concept mapping tool. But there are still some other features that make it an even more powerful tool. Let me show you those. First of all, if you highlight some terms, let's say a particular branch of terms, and then you click the right side of your mouse, you right click, and then click nested mode and create, what it will do is it highlights those, or it doesn't really highlight, but it encircles, it lassoes those uh, terms. And now if you click the little arrow that has appeared here, they will collapse into a single node that contains them which we can name, and we will again change the font to, what was it, 24? There we are. So that now we can open and close that cluster, or that nested node, whenever we want. So that can be a powerful tool. Another thing that you can do is that you can change the appearance of some of the nodes. So let's say the top node, parts of speech, we want to bold it, which we do through the style palette, and maybe we want to make it even bigger, and perhaps we even want to change the color. So now we go from font to object, objects include the nodes, and we'll change the color to something like that, an orange color. We could do something similar with each branch in the concept map to make the branches 
distinct from each other, so we would highlight conjunctions and coordinate the such as is, subordinate such as, but, and I'm doing that by holding down the control key as I click each one. And now we go back to the style palette, click yellow, make them all yellow. And for this branch, we do the same thing and make them all, well, that's not different enough, make them all this color. We can also change the appearance of the lines or the arrows. Again, we simply highlight everything, go to the style palette, click line, go to thickness and choose a thicker line. There we are. We can also add arrowheads if we want to the lines in order to indicate the direction. So we just click, oops, I have to highlight them again. And there we have arrowheads. Now here is an interesting and very powerful feature. Let's say you have a very complex concept map, multiple branches and multiple levels, and let's say that it's sort of confused or messed up. This is over there, and this is over there, that's over there, this is down here. Uh, no one in their right mind would actually construct such a thing, but I'm exaggerating this for purposes of demonstration. So let's say you have a kind of untidy concept map like that. You go up to Format, click Auto Layout, and it selects to Hierarchical, and then Generate New Layout, and it, as you'll see, straightens everything up. You might still need to do some tidying, like that, but it can save you a lot of work moving things around. If you don't want to use something as radical as the auto layout tool that we just looked at, let's say that some of your nodes are, they all, they all belong to the same level, but they're kind of uneven. Simply, simply highlight them by controlling and clicking each one of them. Go to Object in the Style Palette, click Align, and click Align Middle, and it will align them horizontally, like that. Again, it's not perfect because it's overlapped some things, but it's easy to move them down now, just like that, and then we can pull the other parts down until we get something that looks good. Another thing you can do with the CMAP tools is you can add links to the various parts of your concept map, hyperlinks to the web. So with conjunctive adverbs, for example, we can link that to a page which provides more information about what are conjunctive adverbs, and I'll show you how I would do this. So I have gone to Wikipedia. I am going to type in conjunct adverb. There is the Wikipedia article that explains what conjunctive adverbs are. I copy the address and now I go to the conjunctive adverbs node. I select add web address. I entitle it. I'll call it something like Wikipedia article on conjunctive adverbs. I paste in the web address. I can add a more elaborate description if I want here, and I can also add some keywords which uh, can be searched. I won't do that right now. It saves the link, and now you'll see a little icon has appeared here, and if I click it, it says Wikipedia article on conjunctive adverbs, and now if I click that, that article opens up. So I think you can see how powerful a concept map can be when you combine it with hyperlinks to other resources on the web. Kind of similar, you can also add info information to a node, which will appear when you mouse over it with your cursor. So I've highlighted coordinate under the coordinate conjunction branch, and I could add some information like this. Um, there are only I think it's five coordinate conjunctions in English. That might not be the right number. It's a small number, though, five or seven. And now 
when I mouse over it, that note pops up. And you can also annotate it. The annotation, though, is more if you are working on a concept map collaboratively. And I might say something like this. I will find an appropriate link for this node next week. And then I minimize it. So that tells your collaborators that you are still working on something or what your intentions are. So the three things that can be added to nodes again, a link to a web resource, a rollover or pop-up information, and an annotation for making notes to yourself or to your collaborators on the concept map. The next thing I want to show you is how to save your CMAP. And there are two ways or two places that you can do that. So first of all, you would go over to File and you would click Save CMAP. Now, it will default to a location on the hard drive of your computer. And you may as well put it there if you have no intention of sharing or, or rather I should say collaborating on the concept map with anyone else or if you don't want to be able to edit the concept map from another location. I however often find that I want to be editing or working on concept maps at home or at my office or on my laptop when I'm uh, traveling and so instead of saving it to the hard drive of my computer I will save it to one of the servers that the CMAP tools organization IHMC provides. So you click on this icon and I already have a folder set up on the number three server so I'm going to click that. Then I click Users where it says Create Your Own Folder and you too can create your own folder. Again it's, it's a, a free part of the CMAP tool. The folders of the hundreds or perhaps thousands of users appear and then I just have to scroll down until I find mine in the alphabetical list. Um, there we are. You can have subfolders within your, within your own folder. Uh, I'm just going to put it in my main folder. And so I am going to call this How to Create a Concept Map in CMAP Tools. Your focus question. Actually, maybe that should be my focus question. So let me cut and paste that. So how do I create a concept map in CMAP tools? And the name I will just call CMAP tools. You can add keywords. And because I've used the tool before, it already has the author information, organization information, and my email address there. Now I click Save, and it might ask me, yes it has, if I want to save uh, all the resources, the linked resources, that was the link to the Wikipedia article about conjunctive adverbs, and it asked me if I would like to copy the linked resource. I do, so I will click Yes to All. and it saves it to the server and that is where it now resides. It is somewhere on a CMAP server somewhere on planet Earth. Now as I was saying the great thing about that is that I can access and edit my concept map from any computer now where I have installed the CMAP tools software. But one other benefit of putting it onto a server is that I can view it as a web page so I'm going to click down here and you'll see that it renders the concept map as a web page. And this is very handy if you want to share the concept map with someone who hasn't downloaded and installed the CMAP tool software. 
not all of the functionality is retained when it is rendered into a web page. For example, the nesting no longer works, but the links still work, and the rollover pop-up text does not work. But you have 90% of the concept map here. In terms of collaborating with someone else on the same CMAP, there are two ways that you can do that. One way would be to simply share your username and account with someone else so that they can log in and edit it as if they were you. However, if you take that approach, you won't be able to collaborate synchronously, that is, simultaneously or at the same time on the same concept map. If you want to do that, then there are two things you can do. One is you can go up to the top right corner here and click this icon and you will get a message that says synchronous collaboration enabled. And this means that others will now be able to find the resource, uh, the concept map, that you have added to the, uh, uploaded to the server, the CMAP server, and they will be able to edit this map. The second option is this. If someone has a concept map and you are interested in collaborating on it, you can request a synchronous collaboration session. So I'm now going to try to show you that other way of engaging in synchronous collaboration on a concept map. And to do that, first I'm going to Window. I'm going to go to Show Views. And that will show me the various places where concept maps have been stored or saved. I'm going to go to Server 3 again. And I'm just going to find a user. So I'm going to open up the folder that belongs to this individual, Josh McLernan, and I will open up a concept map that he has created. Looks like a well-developed concept map. And now, watch what happens if I attempt to edit this concept map. I get a pop-up window that says please enter a user ID and password to access the resource. I could type in my user ID and a password and if Josh McLernan had given me access to this, if he had set me up as, as, as someone who is allowed to edit, then I would be able to edit it at the same time that he does. But I'm not going to do that because I don't know Josh McLernan. and we'll go back to our concept. In any event, I think you can probably imagine the, the power of being able to simultaneously edit a concept map with colleagues who are in different cities or even different countries. I want to show you two more features of CMAP tools, namely the presentation builder and the outline view. Let's start with the outline view. To access it, you click the green icon over here on the right side, and you'll see that what it gives you is a rendering of the concept map in a more hierarchical, conventional outline. And this can be useful because if you want to turn your concept map into an essay or a report, it's probably much easier to do that if you are working from an outline version of it rather than a concept map version of it. You can also export the concept map as an outline by going to File, then Export CMAP As, and you actually have a number of export options. You can, if you want, export it as an image, for example a JPEG, or as a PDF, a web page, and down here is you can export it as a CMAP outline. So if we click that, it would render it as an outline and then we could work with it in that format. Now finally let's look at the presentation builder which you access by clicking this bottom icon in the list of four here. You'll see that it says empty presentation because we haven't created one yet. And to do that we use the tools here. There are five of them. This first one says copies the selected slide and adds the selected CMAP items to it. 
The next one says add selected CMAP items to a new slide. The third one says insert the selected CMAP items to the selected slide. The fourth one says updates selected slide with selected CMAP items. And the last one removes the selected items. Of these five, probably the most important, or at least the one that you will start with when you are creating a presentation, is this one. Add selected CMAP items to a new slide. So let's see this in action. Let's highlight one of the items, parts of speech, and now I'm simply going to click the adds selected item to a new slide. And there it is. We can minimize it for space. Now for the next slide, I want to have all of these items. So we highlight them by dragging over them and that highlights them. We can now click that. It's created a new slide with all of those items in it. Minimize it for space reasons again. And let's say we wanted to focus on a particular branch of the concept map. Again, we highlight it, highlight the items, have to highlight each individual item, even the individual parts of the arrows. Once you've done that, click that icon again and we have a third slide. Now when we look at it as a presentation, this is what we see. That's our first slide, parts of speech. To move to the second slide, click the arrow near the bottom and we are given the next slide. It looks like we forgot to include one of the items, but that is easily fixed. And then if we click to the third slide, we'll see that that is the one where we focused on a particular branch. There are two benefits of having a presentation associated with your concept map. The first is that if you are presenting the concept map in a lecture or during a class, instead of having to display the entire map to your students all at once, which might be a bit overwhelming, you can focus on sections of the map or branches of the map or levels within the map in order to unfold or reveal it to them, to your students, in a more step-by-step -step process. The second benefit is that if you distribute your concept map to others, they are able to move through your concept map by themselves using the pathways or sequences that you have set up as a presentation. I now want to show you the second concept mapping tool. It's called VIEW, which stands for Visual Understanding Environment. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the aspects of view that are similar to those that we saw in CMAP tools. For example, the process of building the concept map is really more or less the same. The principles behind it are very similar. Uh, you click on this, for example, to create a node and another node and another node and another node. You can change the colors, the size of the font, things like that then you connect them by clicking here and so on you can add images and links to the nodes you can add descriptors or labels to the connecting lines pretty much anything that we saw in CMAP tools you can also do in view and if you can use CMAP tools, you'll be able to figure out view quite easily, except, I think, for one aspect. And that aspect is called pathways. And this is perhaps the most powerful component of the view tool. Now, to demonstrate pathways, I'm going to start by creating a very simple concept map. It will have only four elements in it. The first one is dogs, hunting dogs, which is a subcategory, collies, a further subcategory. Actually, I think collies are also a herding dog, but they have been used for hunting as well. And then lassie, the 
fictional TV dog, which was a kind of collie. Now I am going to connect these. And of course we could have other branches as well. For example, dogs could also go down to herding dogs. So there we have a simple concept map. And now what we are going to do is create a pathway. And a pathway, as the name suggests, is a path through a certain branch or certain items in a particular sequence within the concept map. I'm going to create a pathway that goes from dogs to hunting dogs to collies to lassie. To do that, we highlight dogs, go over to the Pathways toolbar here, and click Add. And there's the first one that is added. We'll now add hunting dogs and collies and lassie. OK. Now you'll see that that process has created a black square under each one of the items that we selected. Those black squares are slides, and slides are associated with a particular node, but they are not identical with a particular node. A node, for example, you probably want to keep fairly simple so that its label stands out. You don't want to have a lot of extra or extraneous information in the node itself. The slide, however, which will be the basis of the pathway or the presentation, you might want to put lots more information and images and links into it. So that's what we're going to do with this slide here. So we double click it and it opens up in an editing mode. We can add, if we right click, we can add an image. I have selected some images already, so we'll add an image called Dogs. And it adds it. We can increase the size like that. And then we can add some text. I'm simply pasting the text in. We can position that text where we want it. We can edit the text itself. I'm getting rid of these numbers. I took the text from Wikipedia, and those were footnotes. And we can also add an URL to a web address. In this case, I'm adding the web address to Wikipedia. Just move things around. And there, we have created a slide that contains text, an image, and a web URL. And the slide is associated with a corresponding node on the concept map. Now, we can do that for all four of the slides that we created, and I'm going to do that right now. Now, I've created slides for all four of the nodes that I want to include in this presentation. And we can now view the presentation by clicking the arrow here beside Playback. There is the first slide. We navigate to the next one by using the arrow key on the keyboard. Third slide. Fourth slide. And these links, by the way, are active. If we click on it, it will open the web browser and take us to that page. To exit the presentation, you simply click Escape on your keyboard, and we are back in the concept map itself. Now when you create slides and associate them with your nodes, you don't have to have them visible. You might, for example, want to focus on the concept map part of the concept map and not the slides. So you can hide the slides by clicking up here, and if you click that, you can hide or reveal the arrows. A single concept map can have any number of pathways associated with it. The one that we have created 
takes us through dogs, hunting dogs, collies, and lassie. But if we had a more complex concept map, one that also had herding dogs and show dogs, etc., we could have pathways through all of those branches as well. And we could choose one path over another path. We could in other words, we could choose path A or path B or C, and your audience too, if they were viewing it on their own computers after you have created it, they also could choose one path or the other path or the other path. So this is just a quick demonstration of one of the powerful features of the view or visual understanding environment concept mapping software. It's not just a concept mapping tool it is that, and it's very good at that, but it also has this pathway component that allows you to create paths through the concept map, which in turn allows you to use the tool as a presentation tool, allowing you to focus on certain parts of the concept map in a certain sequence. The last concept mapping tool that I will show you is called MindMeister. It's a free tool and it has some capabilities that the previous two concept mapping tools that I've showed you, CMAP Tools and View, do not have. Let me show you by opening up a concept map that I've previously created in MindMeister. So this is the concept map that I created. It has three main branches and all of the branches pertain to educational technologies. And this doesn't look like a very complex concept map, but in fact it is, because each one of these main branches can be opened up by clicking them. And then each one of those sub-branches can be opened or closed as you desire. This means, of course, that you can have a very complex concept map, but you don't need to display all of its complexity at the same time. You can show one branch at a time, close it, and then show the next branch, and so on. MindMeister is extremely easy to use. You can learn how to use it in about five minutes. If you want to create a new main branch, you simply double-click on the canvas, like that or if you wanted to create a sub-branch, you click the branch above it, and then up here you click Add. You'll see that it creates a new node called New Node, and we can name it whatever we want. Um, example, something like that. The nodes on the map can contain web links. There you'll see it I'm just hovering over it and it says that the external link is smarttech.com and if I were to click that it would open the browser and go to that address. And you can also highlight certain nodes uh, by putting a star beside it for example. I'm suggesting that this is my recommended uh, dynamic concept tool. And the other useful tool within MindMeister is that you can collaborate on the creation or editing of a MindMeister concept map with others at the same time. In other words, in real time you can simultaneously work on a concept map with a colleague. I don't think I need to say anything else about MindMeister. It really is very easy to use and it can be very effective for certain kinds of concept maps. So in this screencast we have looked at three different concept mapping tools. First of all, we looked at CMAP tools. Then we looked at VIEW, which stands for Visual Understanding Environment. And finally, we looked at MindMeister. All of them are excellent tools, and I would urge you to play around with them all and find out which one works best for your purposes. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at mmorton at uwaterloo.ca or check out my ePortfolio if you want at markmorton.ca